All right, hello fifth grade. Today is day 15 of our video lesson. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all doing okay, and I hope you're all healthy. Okay, um, just as a reminder, uh, this week will be a short week um, because your spring break begins on Thursday, um, on Holy Thursday. Um, on Wednesday, we will have a Zoom uh, Station of the Cross, and I'll give you more information about that tomorrow. Um, but really for this week, we're just going to have today, Monday and tomorrow, Tuesday of our regular lessons. Wednesday, we're going to do a station of the cross activity with the whole school. And again, I'll explain how that's going to look like, uh, tomorrow. Okay. Um, uh, but that's it for that. Um, I want to go over some important information moving forward. Um, so again, thank all of you for, um, turning in your work, parents, students, everybody, um, families, thank you, uh, for, for being responsible and, and for all of you students who are turning in your work, um, keep up the good work. Um, as of right now, we do not know when we're coming back for sure. Okay. Um, the archdiocese did say that we were planning on coming back the 21st of April. Um, but as of right now, it's still, it's, it's moved. So we're not coming back to 21st. It looks like, um, we might come back later. We're not sure. As some of you might know, public schools are not coming back until next school year. Um, but for us, private Catholic schools, we're not sure we might come back earlier. We're hoping that we come back before the end of the year, but, um, but that's what we have so far. Um, however, no matter when we get back, um, we're going to be learning. Okay. It doesn't matter when we get back. It, we could be back, um, in three weeks, four weeks, doesn't matter. We still have 10 weeks left of school and we're going to make sure that we finish it off strong. Okay. Um, if this, if this goes on for the rest of the school year, that's okay. We're going to get through it. Um, and we're still going to be learning. Okay. Um, and that's a perfect, uh, transition because I just want to remind you all um, that you should be turning in your exit tickets and your quizzes okay because that's what's gonna go in your grade book okay everybody uh, students and parents um, you have one more final report card that's gonna that's gonna be the end of the year report card um, and the thing that I'm gonna be looking at is your quiz scores okay the those quiz scores that are on your Google Forms um, so it's very important that you're completing that again. So for math, I'm going to be looking at your quiz scores for, um, through Google forms, right. And for science, I'm going to be looking at your studies weekly scores. Okay. So again, for my class, for my two grades, we're going to be here. I'll write it down for math, your test, you're going to be completing them through the Google forms. Okay. So same deal through Google Forms. For science, you're gonna be completing the studies weekly. Okay, that's where you're gonna be taking your test. Studiesweekly.com. So moving forward, and again, some of you might already be doing this, thank you, uh, but if you're still confused for my class, for my math and science class, you're going to be taking your test through Google Forms, okay? And this is this is in the description for the YouTube videos, okay? So, for example, let's say tomorrow you're going to have a math quiz, then in the description for YouTube, you there's going to be a link and you click on it and it'll take you straight to the quiz, okay? Um for science, tomorrow you're going to be taking your test for um for your for this week's unit so you go to studiesweekly.com you log in using the information i gave you and then you take your test okay so let's say that um next friday you have a quiz so on friday's youtube video you go to the description um you're gonna see a link and then you click on it and it's gonna take you to the google form quiz and then you answer it um like you always do, okay? If you have a science test, I will remind you 
uh, to take it, okay? But again, that's the only thing that I'm gonna be grading, your, your test and quiz scores. Um, so again, it's just very important that you actually take this seriously. It's very important that um, you're being honest with your scores. Um, and yeah, again, just a reminder, please be sure that you're filling this out, okay? Um, I know that Miss Gillespie, she does something different. Um, I think she uses Google Meet. Um, she, you're starting to use, um, you're starting to use Seesaw. Um, so that's one way, but that's, again, that's only for her class, okay? For my class, for our math and science class, this is how we do it, okay? This, this is what you're going to be completing, the Google Forms quizzes and the studies weekly, okay? Daily, I give out exit tickets just like in regular class. Those are not graded. That doesn't go into the grade book. That's really just for me to make sure that you're understanding the lesson. Um, for example, last Friday, I saw the exit ticket um, scores for my fourth graders and I saw that I think we need to go over the unit. So then today, I'm gonna go over the unit again. I'm not gonna move on, okay? Um, same thing for this class. Your exit tickets are important because it lets me know how well you're understanding the lesson. So for example, today we're gonna be working with a little bit about um, dividing and fractions. If most of you put that you're at a one or a two for your level of understanding, then I'm not gonna move on. That means tomorrow we're gonna go over more examples, okay? But let's say today, um, when you complete your exit tickets, I look at them and I see that most of you are a three or a four then that tells me that you're understanding the lesson and I can move on, okay? So again, exit tickets are not graded, but they are very, very important, okay? If you have a question, you type it in there and then I, you know, and then I answer it or I take the time to do a warm-up question on it or whatever, okay? So again, reminder, if, if it's a math quiz or a test, Google Forms, Science Studies Weekly, all right? And if you're having trouble, um, please, please message me, okay? You have my email and you have my remind. Okay, in your packet, just as a reminder. In this packet, you have my remind code right there, okay? You have the fourth grade remind code for my class, and then there's also the fifth grade. But this remind code is only for my class, for Mr. Giannis, okay? This is not the code for Ms. Gillespie, all right? This is my my code for my class, all right? You have your own remind code for your fifth grade class when this was Ms. Gillespie. All right, um, with that, I think that covers all the important information. Again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and, and message me. I'll be more than happy to talk about it. But other than that, um, let's go ahead and start with our warm up. Go ahead and pause the video and answer the question. All right, hopefully you were all able to answer these questions. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, number one says, one hole and one over two plus two holes. Okay, we're adding. And again, adding is generally easier, all right? Let's go ahead and add up our whole numbers first. One plus two, three. Then our fractions, one over two, there's no fraction here, so we just put it over here, and that's our answer, okay? Now, one thing I do want to remind you all, um, as I'm sure you, some of you might have noticed, there are different ways you can solve um, subtraction problems and addition problems, okay, with fractions. There are multiple, multiple ways, and we're gonna go over those ways, um, you know, this unit. Whatever method you think makes sense for you, go for it, solve it. Um, if the method that we're doing in class, if that works for you, then keep following. If not, use um, another method that we might have talked about here as well. All right, number two says two holes and one over three. Minus one hole and one over four. So one way that we learned last Friday is... Well, first of all, we have to look at our denominators. Our denominators are not the same. This is one over three, this is one over four. Therefore, we cannot subtract them yet, okay? Now let's look at our whole numbers. We have two and we have one. Two minus one, that's one. 
if we take away this one from this two, two minus one, that's one, one over three, this one goes away, we bring down our minus sign, we bring down our one fourth. So now our new equation is, our new equation is one whole, one over three minus one over four. All right, we subtracted our whole numbers first. Two minus this one, that's just one, okay? So now we have this equation. But let's just ignore our one whole for a bit. And now what do we have? We have one over three minus one over four. We'll worry about this one later on, all right? Now, I need to make my denominators the same, all right? And I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna find my LCD, my least common denominator. So my denominators are three and four. Let's skip count. Three, six, nine, 12. I'll stop right there. Four, eight, 12, 16. And look, I already see a number that they both have in common. What number is that? Exactly, the 12. So my least common denominator is 12. 12 is the number that they both have in common. They both share the 12. They both share the same number. All right, so how can I turn this three into a 12? What do I need to multiply it by? Three times what number? Exactly, three times four. What about this fraction, one over four? How can I turn this four into a 12? Four times what number will give me 12? Exactly, four times three. So now everybody, we're gonna have new fractions. One times four, four. Three times four, 12. Minus three times one, three. Four times three, 12. All right, and then the one whole. I have four over 12 minus three over 12. That's perfect. 4 minus 3, that's 1, 1 over 12, and then I just bring down my 1 over here, and this is my answer. I'm not, there's no whole number, I already subtracted my whole numbers here, so now this is just my answer. 1 whole and 1 over 12, okay? Alright. Oops, sorry about that. Alright, number 3. Number 3. Five holes and one over eight minus one over four. All right, let's go ahead and identify our whole numbers and subtract those. Five and, oh, I don't have anything here. So I'll just bring down my five. And then I have one over eight minus one over four. So that's my equation. Let's just ignore my whole number for a bit for now. Now what do I have? I have one over eight minus one over four. The denominators are not the same, so I need to make them the same. Let's find our least common denominator. I have eight and I have four. All right, I need to find a number that they both have in common. So let's skip count. Eight, 16, 12, 24. We'll stop right there. Well, let's go one more, 32. I have four, eight, 12, 16, 20. What number do they both have in common? Well, they have a lot of numbers in common, right? They have, let's see, they have a 16. They have a 12. They have an eight. But even though they share multiple numbers, which one is the one that I care about? Which one is my least common denominator? Exactly, my eight. That is the first number they share, okay? I don't care that they, that they share a... Whoa, I made a mistake, everybody. It's no 12. It's 8, 16, 24. I'm sorry. But either way, it, did, it didn't matter because the number that does matter is the eight. Right? That is my least common denominator. It's the number... That comes up first, 
Even though they share the 16, eight is less than 16 and we care about the least, right? The least common denominator. All right, so how can I switch up this eight to be an eight? Well, it's already an eight, so I don't need to do anything to it. It's already an eight. My denominator is already an eight. I don't need to switch it. How can I switch up the four to become an eight? Four times what number will give me eight? Yep, two. 4 times 2. So now I have different fractions. 1 times 2, 2. 4 times 2, 8. Whoa. That's interesting. I have 1 minus 2. You see that? I have 1 min 1 over 8 minus 2 over 8. Hmm. Oh, but I'm missing something. I am missing what? Exactly, I'm missing my whole number. I'm missing my five, right? This is all one fraction right here, five and one over eight. This is all one fraction. Now, do you all remember what I did last time? Yeah, I needed to switch this five into, not a whole number, into a fraction. Now, I am doing it for this one because look, I had two, over 8, I'm subtracting that from 1, okay? This number is greater than this number. And so I'm going to have to switch up my whole number. I'm going to have to ask for help from my whole number. Because what's happening here is that, let's say that um, you needed to buy a bag of chips that cost $2, but you only have $1. Okay, so you're going to have to switch up this 5, exchange this 5 whole to help you out. Now, what I did last time that took a long time is I had 5 boxes, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I switched them into 8 pieces. And they were all filled up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it's messy again, but this is not the point. Right? And all of them are filled up because it was five holes. One hole. Two holes, three holes, four holes, and five holes. And then they had eight pieces and eight of them were filled in. So I had eight over eight, eight over eight, eight. Over eight, eight over eight, and eight over eight. And if I were to add all of them, I had eight over eight plus eight over eight plus eight over eight plus eight over eight plus eight over eight. I will get, let me erase all of this. I will get 40 over eight. Right? Five holes in a fraction is 40 over eight. But then I also have the 1 over 8 here. And remember, these this is one whole fraction. This is one whole fraction. Where did I get the 40 over 8? From the 5. Because if I were to draw 5 boxes like I did right now, each box is 8 over 8. I did 5 of them, so 8 times 5, that gives me 40. Okay? And then I also have this 1 over 8. And because they are the same fractions, I could combine them. 40 plus 1, 41, and then my denominators are the same. And now, now I can go ahead and subtract it because now I have enough to subtract. Let's bring it over down here. And look, my denominators are the same and it's perfect. 41 over 8 minus 2 over 8, 41 minus 2, 39. My denominator does not change, so it's 39 over 8. That is my answer. All right? Okay. Last one. One hole in 5 over 10 minus 5 over tenths. I subtract my whole numbers, one minus, well, I don't have anything here, so it's just one. I bring down the five over 10 minus the five over 10. I ignore my whole number for now. 
5 over 10 minus 5 over 10. Well, I got lucky for this one because my denominators are the same already. So I can just subtract. 5 minus 5, 0. And then I bring down my whole 1. But don't get it confused. It's not 0. I mean, it's not 10. It's just 1. Okay? Might be tricky, but again, cover up your whole number. 5, mi five over 10 minus 5 over 10. That's just zero, so I don't need to put anything. But then I bring down my one hole, and so my answer is just one, okay? All right, and that's it. Okay, so hopefully we're all feeling a little bit better with adding and subtracting, with adding and subtracting fractions. I know that you all had, um, I gave you all a lot of practice this weekend with those worksheets. So hopefully it's becoming a lot easier. All right. Today, we're going to, or this week, um, and next week, we're going to be learning how to multiply and divide fractions. I think it's a lot easier. Um, but before we do a lot of practice, let's just take it easy. We'll take it slow. Uh, we'll start off with baby steps, and then we'll move on to a little bit more challenging stuff, okay? But first of all, I just want to explain what fractions are again. Because if you remember, when we first started fractions, I told you that fractions are like pieces, okay? Remember that. Fractions are just like pieces. Another word for fraction is piece, okay? So instead of saying, I have a piece of chocolate, you can say I have a fraction of chocolate, all right? Another way you can think about it, let's say we have a number line. Let's say that we have one hole here and two holes here, and then we have a zero. Another way you can think of fractions are, fractions are kind of like the pieces that live between each whole number. So let's say I have a three over here, okay? These are my whole numbers, one, two, and three, and zero. Fractions are like the little tick marks in between, in between whole numbers. So this first one could be, I don't know, one whole and, one over four. This one can be one whole and two over four. This one can be one whole and three over four. Okay, these are your fractions. These are frag. These are pieces. You have one whole, and then you have a piece. You have another hole, and then you have a piece. You have another hole, and then you have a piece. And now you have two holes. Two holes. And same thing here. You have two holes. One over four, two holes, two over four. And then two holes, three or four, and then two holes and four or four or three, okay? That, that's what fractions are. They are pieces. Now, it's going to be very important um, moving forward. So what we're going to do today is we're just going to divide. We're going to divide whole numbers and see how they give us fractions, okay? So let's do an I do. We'll start off with 5 divided by 3. And we're going to be drawing pictures for these as well. Okay, so pay close attention. 5 over 3, one way I like to think of it as is like, let's say I have 5 um, cookies divided by 3. You have 5 cookies and you need to divide that equally by three. So I have one cookie, two, three, four, five, right? You're dividing that equally into three. Let's say you have three friends. One, two, three. Okay. And you know what? That's actually not think of it as cookies. Let's say that they are Kit Kat bars. Let's say you have five Kit Kat bars. One. It's one Kit Kat bar, two Kit Kat bars, three Kit Kat bars, four Kit Kat bars, and five Kit Kat bars. All right? And again, you're dividing it equally. You are sharing it equally to three into three people, all right? 
each person has to have the same amount of Kit Kat bars. Well, hmm, let's take a look at this one. Well, if I wanted to divide it equally, first of all, I could give one whole Kit Kat bar to one person. So he'll get one whole Kit Kat bar. And then th this one will go to this person and that person will get one whole Kit Kat bar. And then this one will go to this person. And so that person will get one whole Kit Kat bar. But now what am I gonna have to do to this thing? What am I gonna have to do to these two? Hmm. Well, because since I am dividing it by three, that means I have to break this Kit Kat bar into three pieces. One, two, three. One, two, three. And now, you don't have a whole Kit Kat bar to give away. You have a piece. You have a fraction of a Kit Kat bar, right? You have one piece, two piece, three piece. One piece, two piece, three piece. So let's give those away. This one will go here. So this person will have one Kit Kat bar. I mean, a fraction of this Kit Kat bar. And then if we break out another piece of the Kit Kat bar, this person will get it. And then if we break out another piece of this Kit Kat bar, this person will get it. Right? And then I have three more. I have this piece will go over here, this piece, this person will get, and this piece, this person will get. And now I have my answer, everybody. I have my answer. 5 divided by 3 is equal to, well, the question is saying you have 5 Kit Kat bars and you need to divide it by, into 3 people. How much did each person get? Well, they got one whole, right? This is the red box. They got one whole Kit Kat bar. And then what's the fraction? Two. They got two. What do you think my denominator will be? Two out of three, right? Because that's what I broke the, the Kit Kat into, right? Another way, is think, another way to think about it is, well, if a Kit Kat bar has three pieces, then they got one whole, right? One whole, they got one whole Kit Kat bar, and then two out of the three, right? So they didn't get that third one, they only got one whole, and then two out of the three pieces, all right? And that's our answer right there. Let's go ahead and do another one. And this is still an I do. Let's say that we now we had one divided by four. So then that means that now I only have one Kit Kat bar. And I needed to divide it equally into four people. Four people are going to share this Kit Kat bar equally. Hmm. So how am I going to do this one, actually? Because unlike last time, last time, each person got one whole bar. But now, now it's different, right? Now it's different. Because now I only have one bar, but I have four people. So, hmm. Well, I am dividing it by four. So then that means I could break apart this Kit Kat into four. And this is something that I'm, I've done most of the time, and I'm sure probably some of you have done, because Kit Kats actually do come in four. So then that means I have four people here. So he, this person here is gonna get a piece of that Kit Kat bar. This person here is gonna get a piece of that Kit Kat bar. And this person here is gonna get a piece of that Kit Kat bar. 
And this person here is going to get another fraction of the Kit Kat bar. But notice, are they getting one whole Kit Kat bar? Is this person here getting one whole Kit Kat bar? No, they're just getting a piece. They're getting a fraction of that Kit Kat bar. And here, maybe if I do it in color to help you, let's say this piece is blue, then they're getting that blue piece. Let's say this piece is black, then they're getting that black piece. Let's say that this piece is green, then they're getting this green piece. Let's say this piece is purple, and they're getting that purple. Okay, they're not getting one whole Kit Kat bar. They wish they were getting one whole Kit Kat bar, but they're not. They're only getting, guess what my fraction is gonna be? They're only getting one of the four, one over four, okay? They're getting a fourth of the Kit Kat bar, right? Because let's say that this was a whole Kit Kat bar. They're not getting the rest of the three pieces, one, two, three. They're only getting one out of the whole four. All right? Well, let's get a little bit more practice. So the answer to one divided by four is one fourth. All right? And this one can be a you do. And again, draw it. I, I love to use the example of Kit Kat bars because Kit Kat bars, for me, it's very simple to think of them as fractions because once I break them apart, they do become fractions. So let's do, well, first of all, this will be a you do. Hmm, let's try three divided by five. All right, don't get confused. Last time, our first example was five divided by three. This time we'll have three divided by five. Very different equations, okay? Very, very different equations. Pay attention. We have three divided by five. So again, you do, go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own. All right, hopefully you were all able to solve it. If not, that's okay. So we have three Kit Kat bars. One, two, three. And how many people are we dividing it into? Five. One, two, three, four, five. So you have three Kit Kat bars and you're trying to split it equally into your five friends. So how are you gonna do that? Well, hmm. Can I can each person get a one whole Kit Kat bar? Would that be equal? Let's say this whole person got the Kit Kat bar, this whole person got the, the Kit Kat bar, and this whole person got the Kit Kat bar. Well, actually, no, that won't work. That won't work at all because these people aren't getting any, aren't getting any Kit Kat bars. So, hmm, how can I do this? Well, much like I did with the problem before, I'm gonna have to split this up into Five, okay, your second number, this number here tells you how many you need to break it apart by. I should make it a bit bigger. I have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five pieces. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So let's see how each, let's see how many pieces each person will get. So this person will get this piece right here. So they're grabbing one piece. Then this piece will go to this person. Then this piece will go to this person. Then this piece will go to this person. And this piece will go to this person. Okay, now again, they're not getting whole Kit Kat bars, they're just getting fractions. They're getting pieces of that Kit Kat bar. But look at this, I have all of this left over. Then this person will go here. This piece will go to this person. This person will go, I mean, that piece will go to this person. That piece will go to this person. That piece will go to that person. 
Now again, the arch is getting fractions of the Kit Kat bar. That piece will go here. That piece will go to this guy. That piece will go to this person. That piece will go to this person. And then this piece will go to this person. So, so what is my answer then? How much did each person get? You had three Kit Kat bars and you needed to divide them equally to your five friends. How many pieces did each friend get? They got three. But if I were to, they didn't get three holes, this is three holes right here. And remember, they didn't get holes, they got fractions. So then that means they got three, what's my denominator? Fifths, right. Because let's say that, or for this equation, we split up a Kit Kat bar into five pieces. If the, if the equation was three divided by six, then we would split the Kit Kat bar into six pieces. If it said three divided by 10, then we would split the Kit Kat bar into 10 pieces. If it said divided by 12, then we would split it into 12. If it said 15, we would split this Kit Kat bar into 15 pieces. If it said 20, we would split it into 20 pieces, okay? But in this case, we split it up by five, so they got three out of the five total possible pieces, okay? And so that's my answer. Last one, and again, this one will be a you do. Seven divided by four. Try that one. Go ahead and pause the video and solve the question. Okay, so now I have seven Kit Kat bars and I'm gonna try and divide it into four of my friends. So I have one, two holes, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and I'm trying to split these up into the four of my friends. Again, I want all of them to get the same amount. Actually, I'm running out of space. So let's see, how can I do this? I'm gonna do it like this. All right. So, how can I do this one? Hmm, seven pieces for friends. Well, for this one, these people are gonna get lucky. They're gonna get one whole Kit Kat bar because I have enough. So they're gonna get one whole Kit Kat bar. This one, go to this person. This one, we'll go to this person. Again, these are whole Kit Kat bars. This one, we'll go to this person. Man, they are lucky they're getting whole Kit Kat bars. One whole Kit Kat bar, and that one. And then this person will go to this one, then this one will go to that one, and then this one will go to this one, and then, oh, wait, mm -mm. I ran out of Kit Kat bar, so they're not gonna get holes anymore. They're not gonna get whole Kit Kat, Kit Kat bars anymore. So what can I do? Well, since I'm dividing it by four, then I'm gonna split this up into four pieces. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now they're gonna get pieces, okay? Pretend this is a Kit Kat bar. I'm gonna break apart a piece and I'm gonna give it to each person. And I'm gonna do it in blue. So I'm gonna break apart the piece, break apart this piece. It's gonna go here, break apart that piece. It's gonna go to this person, break apart that piece and it's gonna go to this person. Same thing, let's break this one apart. 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 And then let's break this one apart. Let's break apart this one. Let's break apart 
this one. And then let's break apart this one. All right, and that's it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how much um, pieces each person got. Well, they got one whole, they got one whole Kit Kat bar, and then they got one, two, three. What do you think my fraction is? Four. Exactly. So they got one whole, right? One whole Kit Kat bar, and then they got one, two, three. They got only three of the possible four pieces, okay? So they could have gotten four, but there is only enough for them to get three of the four. So that's why it's three over four. All right? And that's it. Hopefully you're all able to get it. Um, I think that you have enough information, everybody. You have enough information to actually do lessons two and lessons three. So any worksheets that you have for lesson two and for lesson three, you have enough information to solve them, okay? Um, they don't give you, they don't give you too much of a difficult types questions. Yeah, yeah, you should definitely have enough information to um, solve pages I mean, lessons two and three, okay? For lesson two, I believe you only have one worksheet anyway. Yep, this is the only worksheet you have for lesson two. So go ahead and for today, finish up lesson two and lesson three, all right? Now, that's it for math, everybody. Uh, there is actually a pretty good video. Um, I'll put the link, I'm gonna copy this link. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to add it to our description in the YouTube video. This is the video. Um, I think it go it does it helps you out if you need some extra help. Um, I did the same example that this person did. I'll leave the link in the YouTube video. And it's just another video you can watch for uh, extra help if you need it. Okay. Um, but again, when you do watch these videos, or maybe you're finding videos online on your own. Um, that's fine. Um, but sometimes I feel like they just make it a little bit more complicated than it needs to be, okay? Um, this person does some pretty good examples. Um, again, you don't have to watch it. You do not have to watch it. Um, only if, let's say, for example, what I was doing today didn't really make a lot of sense, you could go ahead and watch this one and maybe um, it'll become a lot clearer, okay? Um, but that's it for our math. Um, let's move on to our science. For science today, um, and actually, I just want to talk a little bit about, uh, the science unit, the science unit that you were supposed to read, um, this week. Uh, you're going to have your test for this tomorrow on Tuesday, all right? Um, but first of all, what this unit is talking about is that, you know, animals, have are very different right they're very unique and specifically what this unit tried to talk to you about was um just animal behavior you know how animals how animals behave um what do they eat how do they eat um what do they do to defend themselves um some interesting fact is about this spider this spider here or the female spiders, they actually do. They actually do something pretty sneaky. They actually, they have this technique um, where they can, where the females, they can make themselves smell like moth. You know those big. Um, they kind of look like butterflies, and they come out usually at night, and they hover around usually at the light bulbs around light bulbs. Those big moths. Um, the male spiders, they eat the moths. So what these females do is they make themselves um, smell like moth. So then the male spiders, the boy spiders get close and they get caught in the female's web. And then the females eat the males. Um, so that's pretty crazy. Um, it talks about hyenas. Hyenas, they hunt in packs, okay? Um, in the Lion King, they have hyenas. And you see them that they hunt in packs. They come in groups. 
Um, and it even tells you right there, they hunt in packs because they're not really good hunters, okay? Um, they have to work together, otherwise they won't really get a lot of food. Um, another thing that's very, these animals are very annoying, and I'm sure you think so too, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes live off the blood of others, right? Um, they have to drink blood in order to live. Um, it talks about a blood-sucking bat. And yes, these do exist, but they usually, they don't live um, here in around Los Angeles. These are kind of more in jungly areas. Um, they're called vampire bats. They drink blood. Um, and they drink blood of like cows that are in the field or horses even. Um, and sometimes, you know, that's why bats are usually, they always get these weird diseases because they're sucking the blood off of different animals. Um, and so bats can be very dangerous um, because they can carry some deadly viruses and diseases. Um, and then it talks about just some other animals, skunks, I'm sure you know what they do. Um, praying mantises, you know, they have... Um, they camouflage really well. Oh, I'm sorry. They camouflage really well, so it's very hard to um, spot them. But either way, a lot of interesting information, I think, for this unit. Um, and I just wanted to get explain it a little bit more. Um, so for this week, you're going to take out this page for your uh, science. Here we go. And what you're going to do is, so I'm, I apologize, this got printed out wrong. You were originally supposed to cut it, but you're not going to cut it. What instead you're going to do is you're going to grab another piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, and you are going to make a list. Mammals. And then create a line. Then you're gonna create another list, birds. Another list, fish. Reptiles. And then finally, amphibians. What you were originally gonna do is gonna cut them off and then place each animal where they belong. Are they a mammal? Are they a bird, a fish, a reptile, or amphibian? But um, it print double-sided. So if you cut this, you're gonna ruin this page. So you're not gonna cut it, okay? You're not gonna cut it. All you're gonna do is just write it down. So a mammal. Well, a, what's the animal that you see here that's a mammal? A cat. So you're gonna put cat right there. What's the animal that you see it's a bird a duck exactly so you put duck here all right and the whole goal um of this activity is just for you to recognize what mammals are what birds are what fish are now these three mammals birds and fish those should be easy right you know what a mammal is hopefully you know what a bird is and you know what a fish is you might have a little bit of trouble with um reptiles and amphibians Go ahead and do a little bit of research, you know, look on the internet, what's the reptile and what's an amphibian, and um, go ahead and place these animals where they belong, all right? Um, but other than that, that's it, everybody. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video, of the video um, take breaks. Today's video is long. Um, and moving forward, they're, they're probably going to be long, right? I'm, the videos that I'm going to be making, they're going to get long. They're going to be about 40, 50 minutes. Um, give yourselves breaks, right? After every 20 or 30 minutes, take like a five minute break. You know, take your eyes off the screen. Um, do some jumping jacks, maybe. Um, I don't know. Walk around the house, grab a snack, drink some water. Um, take a brain break, all right? And then come back and finish off the video, okay? Um, and again, parents, you know, just... Be sure that you know you're taking breaks as well. Um, don't scare, don't stare at the screen for too long because it's bad for your eyes. Okay. Um, but other than that, everybody, that's it. We have our Zoom meeting tomorrow at 1:30. 
Uh, we will not have a Zoom meeting Thursday, okay? Because that's the beginning of spring break. But uh, other than that, that is it, everybody. Have a great day.